Hello beautiful people. I am back here with another video. I uh, don't have a hair tutorial today because as you can see, I am braided up until summer gets here. But I do have some other things I want to talk about, so thanks for staying around with me. So I've recently discovered that sometimes I can be a bad person. And I know you're looking at me like, duh to you, we can all be bad people sometimes. But this is something that I genuinely just discovered. Um, I guess the reason why it was such an epiphany to me is because I thought that I was the only one that dealt with this. I thought I was the only one that had issues with jealousy. Um, I was the only one that got super hard on myself. I was the only one that laid in bed, um, thinking about a mistake that I made all night. I now realize that while I may not be the only bad person in the world, I might be a little self-centered. So once I realized that I wasn't alone in my tendency to be a little hard on myself, um, I did what I usually do. If you don't know me, I have my degrees in psychology, which means that whenever there's something going on, I always want to know why. So I took the time to do a little research and found out that my issue was not an anomaly. And this is something that people deal with quite often. Um, basically, it's called our inner self critic. Um, your inner self critic is um, not really like your conscience in the way of like your conscience will tell you like this is what you should do or if something aligns with your morals. Your critic is usually negative. And while having that critical inner voice I can be useful in some ways, I've realized that it's impacting me in a lot of ways that I want to kind of get a handle on. Um, some of the major ones being, I can understand when someone else makes a mistake, but when I make a mistake, I'm super hard on myself and I can't extend myself the same grace. Um, I'm really hard on myself. As I said before, I'll lay in bed and think about something that I did six years ago that no one cares about, but it's still like, oh, why did you do that? Um, and another one that's really big that I'm trying to work on is being treated poorly by someone and instead of acknowledging that that person did me wrong and that was not okay i'll think well what did i do to make them act this way like is there something that i did or something that i said to make that person want to lash out at me like that and while having that well-rounded perspective of relationships i think can be nice it can also harm you when people are genuinely not um caring for you and treating you poorly and you don't defend yourself enough or respect yourself enough to create those boundaries and know that like this was not me this was me being disrespected another thing that i do that's starting to wear me down is doing extra and by default like doing extra going above and beyond for people is definitely not a bad thing but it's come to the point where i feel like i am doing extra at the expense of me as some kind of like makeup karma for some obscure bad thing that I might have did that I don't want to come back at me at some point in life. Um, I'm a really big believer in karma. I believe that what you put out to, into the world, you send back. So whenever I make one of those mistakes that I think is super big, I'm always trying to find a way to make up for it, either with that person or just by doing something better. But I now understand that um, it's taking a toll on me. Um, trying to be everywhere, trying to do everything and be everything for everyone. Um, it's causing me not to take good care of myself. So I want to work on being better and being more present for me because it is okay to be a flawed person and it is okay to make mistakes and maybe hurt people sometimes as long as it's not a consistent pattern of behavior and I am open and honest with myself and the people I love. I don't have to do the most to make up for something that probably wasn't that big of a deal in the first place. So now that I've told you what a critic, my critical inner self does to me, I can kind of explain to you what the psychology community thinks it is. Um, your critical inner self or your inner self critic is a pattern of destructive thoughts and feelings that can impact your life in many different ways. Um, it can impact relationships, your self-esteem, your confidence, um, your productivity at work or at school or even with your passion projects and 
I think we all know what that inner self-critic kind of says. You're not good enough. You shouldn't do this. That was stupid. No one's going to watch your videos. Just those kind of like really negative things that you would expect other people to say. But instead, it's coming from inside of you. And that kind of makes it a little bit more strong because it's like, wait, well, if I feel like this, then what does everybody else think? While my negative thoughts are usually more directed at myself, I've definitely noticed that they can be directed at others well, usually in the form of jealousy of, oh, well, she has so many followers and she doesn't do anything, or I don't understand why that person got the promotion instead of me. Basically just being negative as a whole and taking situations and flipping them on the negative um, and then impacting your mental state on a daily basis. If you didn't know, I suffer from depression and anxiety, um, generalized anxiety. And I think that there's definitely a relationship between my self-critic and my depression. I think that um, my self-critic can kind of cause those slumps as well as my depression can keep me in those slumps of being critical. So I try really hard to find ways to get myself out of it in the moment and long term. And I found three that have been very helpful for me. Um, I hope that they work for you. I'm not saying that I have this under control. I deal with my self-critic every day. But I feel like these three things really help me out. So the first one is I try to redirect my thinking in the moment. So as soon as I have that, oh, I shouldn't do this video. I'm not good enough. I say, well, at the end of the day, it's not about how many people watch the video. It's about me saying what I have to say. And if I even inspire one person to maybe feel a little bit better about themselves, then it's a win. I also try to put things into perspective. Um, so a better example of that, I think, would be not getting a job that I really wanted. Um, instead of being like, you're not smart enough or you're not qualified, you had no business applying in the first place, I'll just say there are a lot of factors that are involved in getting hired for a job. And it may not have been that I wasn't smart enough. It might have been that they had somebody that already worked for the company. It may not have been that I didn't have enough experience. It might have been that I wasn't a right fit for the climate of the company. And that's okay. So those two things are kind of similar, but one is in the moment changing your thinking and the other one I feel like it takes some time to think about the different variables of why you're upset and what could have changed or what could have happened in that scenario that doesn't make it all on you being a bad person, so to say. And the last thing that I think is important is to show yourself grace um, and apologize to yourself. So I apologize to myself in the form of a letter. It's actually on my blog post. It's pretty old, so I might write a new one, but I'll definitely um, link it somewhere. Um, and I think it's important to sit down, be alone and acknowledge like, these are the things that I do that are toxic and that are negative and apologize to yourself for them. We apologize when we wrong other people. I think that we need to treat ourselves the same way. Um, so I sat down and I said, I apologize for running you ragged. I apologize for not asking for help when I need it. I apologize for talking down to you when you are the only body I have and the only mind I have and you get me where I need to go. Um, and I think that that was a big step forward in my growth because I was ready to admit that like I have some behaviors that I need to work on. Um, so yeah, these are the things that I do to try to be in a better headspace and not let myself critic take over. Um, I hope that some of those things work for you. If you have more questions or you just want to have a conversation with me about my self-critic and being less hard on myself, I'm definitely open to doing that. I thank you guys for watching and I hope you have a great day.